Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we leap into the unknown every day. And just like the three nights we'll be seeing during this minute, we usually plunge into the chasm. I'm Pete Mummer. <laughs> I am Tom ah. Taylor. I'm Gerald Christopher St. Ida of Nivelle. Protector against <laughs> erysipelas, which is uh, kind of like cellusitis. Which, have you ever had that, Pete? <laughs> you ever had cellusitis? I had it. I had. I went to Barbados and I got cellusitis, and it was—it's actually no joke. If you cook it, it with some eggs, it's kind of like nice. <laughs> fry it yeah. in garlic and then <laughs> throw an egg in there. Yeah. If you're not careful, it turns into sepsis. Oh yeah, you don't want that. Yeah. That's why I think yeah. Henry's you know, going to get sepsis with that ugh. dirty handkerchief. Oh God! I so want to get cellusitis and rub it all over you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> that would drive you nuts, man. Yeah, it would. Uh, Porter. <laughs> and today we're joined for the second time this season by the New York Times best-selling author of *The Making of Star Wars* and *The Complete Making of Indiana Jones* and an upcoming *Making of the Original Planet of the Apes*. J.W. Ritzler, welcome back. Thanks. Thanks for having me back here again. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun to have you. And today we're going to be talking about Minute 108. Minute 108 begins with Indy breathing a sigh of relief that he made it through the tile maze. And it ends with Henry telling Indy that he must believe. Now, uh, we touched on this yesterday, but Donovan is now entering the crucible here. Like we see him start to peek past the, uh, you know, the first booby trap. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's he's going to. I don't know. I feel a little funny about that. <laughs> like, I'm wondering, does he, what's he going to do when he gets to the second challenge? Like, is, is the J just replaced? Or is he going to tiptoe? Or I think, Pete, as you said, like, is Elsa going to be able to make that uh, that stretch? You know, for that, 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 lo- that first, uh, watch out for that first eye. It's a doozy. Yeah. Pretty nimble. <laughs> that was a pretty good dot of it, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know how they made it across. <laughs> That's uh, unless they took that rope and kind of swung across. Oh yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, it, uh, Jonathan? Is it your understanding that these booby traps would naturally reset? Uh, don't don't we see the the uh, the one that almost chops his head off? Does that reset or not? It he, does. Uh, he a, stops it. He sort of locks yeah. it in place with a with a rope. Yeah. Yeah. But it does seem like it Would, resets either automatically or else it just constantly runs. Well, yeah. we have the answer. Of course it resets because yeah. there's at least two decapitated mm. Matei soldiers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember watching the movie feeling, yeah, that Donovan was getting a bit of a free ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's kind of by design, I guess. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's but done it, the dirty work and now he's following him. Yeah, it, I, I think you're right. It's by, I mean, it's by design because he has to end up in the room with the grails so he can drink the wrong cup. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he, ha- he has to be able to get through there. But it's a little bit, uh, if, if you start to think about it, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I mean, at this point, everybody assumes that you can get the grail and just put it in your backpack and exit. Right? No right. problem. Yeah. There's, there's no indication or, or uh, clue or anything in uh, Chronicles of St. Anselm about uh, <laughs> the WikiLeaks about, you know, it can't pass this seal or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm. Okay. Right. Right. Well, if I remember, I guess you're saying it comes up kind of randomly, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I yeah. guess what I'm wondering. We haven't encountered anything about that yet. <laughs> it does come sort of like way later than it should. It's sort of like on another thing. <laughs> yeah. Now that you pick the right cup. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, it's it's incidental because, you know, the movie's really about Indy and his father. The Grail is the MacGuffin, and that's what uh-huh. makes yeah. this whole 
this minute or the, the sequence of the film so great is that it all by this by, it, by this time they're communicating almost telepathically you know the son has to believe he has to what's what's harder to obtain uh, the holy grail or a distant father's love <laughs> Tommy <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, actually, Jonathan, you mentioned I- Indy and Henry are communicating telepathically. Is that, is that, uh, do you think that's what's going on here? Uh, I mean, there's no, there's no way of proving that objectively, but you have the, the father is, is mumbling something, and isn't Indy saying the same thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, the, and his Only. dad is kind of seeing what he's seeing as well. Like he sees the puzzles in front of him almost. Right. I mean, the father read the book or you know, studied the equation so long that he probably can see it in his mind's eye. Um, but yeah, I mean, it feels to me like they're, you know, the, the bond that they've sort of nurtured during the first hour and a half is now, is now felt at this key moment where he has to right. take this step into the void, which is such a great... Uh, you know, such such a great um, uh, showing, not telling moment. You know, in the in yeah the, in cinema. Yeah. And then I yeah. I like that Indy kind of walks through this narrow opening that's a lot like the kind of the cave, little narrow cave he walks through in the Temple of Doom when he comes out into the sanctuary, and he comes out to this like this giant abyss before him, and the music is spectacular here. It's almost mm-hmm. operatic. Yeah. And it's it's a really nice effect when he's looking down into the chasm and the camera is almost like a pendulum. Like it kind of swings out and back <laughs> a couple of times. And it's really yeah. dizzy. But it's a very yeah. nice shot. Yeah, ILM did one of its best effects ever there. Yeah, yeah. This looks exactly like the, uh, the Leia Luke swinging on the Death Star to me. <laughs> it does, does kind of. Does it? Yeah, I don't, there's something bit. about this abyss. Yeah, and also like the... Uh, I don't know. the The rocks are vertical. You know, it it kind of looks like I don't, the way the Death Star is, like the walls of the the, the oh, interior sure. of the Death Star. Yeah, it's kind of a vertical shaft looking thing. Hmm. The uh, with a little precipice. The addition of Indiana Jones, like in the image, you know, you can kind of tell that he's like you know put in there afterwards, like this is a painting or something. Uh-huh. It looks a lot like uh, Indy and Willie and Shorty emerging from the. Uh, you know the, the the mine tunnel on the cliff, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's got that kind of feel to it. Yeah. I've always been sort of disappointed that like isn't the whole like like the name of this test isn't it like the or something like from the the leap from the lion's head, the leap of right faith or yeah yeah. But there's something yeah, about lion's head. Like, yeah, yeah, it is from the, the lion's head. Well, somebody here yeah. put lion's head, so a person should have, <laughs> yeah should answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does say the leap only in the leap from the lion's head will he prove his worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it always sort of, like, I, I want, like, this opening to be, like, the lion's mouth or something. It seems like sort of an afterthought that there's a lion's head, like, facing, like, it's not even facing the, the, the chasm or anything. It's just sort of there as, like, a right. uh-huh. like a door knocker or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> Welcome to the Leap of Faith. <laughs> yeah. I'm a lion. But then once, once he well, does uh, get to the Leap of Faith, uh, we see kind of what was represented in that garage sale painting in Henry's house. Mm-hmm. We see the chasm, and in, in his house, he had the painting of, of Henry opens up the Grail Diary, and it's the drawing of that painting. And it's the uh, the chasm, and it's got some knights fall, three knights falling down into the chasm. And I think it, it's interesting. Who are these three knights? Mm. Like, are they rivals? Or are they people that got here before the Grail Knight? Or now that they're immortal, does the Grail Knight and his brothers, they just run and jump in there for fun? <laughs> just jump in there for we <laughs> or were they not i mean were they uh, they weren't worthy they didn't take the leap of faith see what's interesting is what if you stand there and you don't take the leap of faith i mean if you didn't take the leap of faith you would just stand there or turn <laughs> around <laughs> yeah right oh. yeah right yeah bridge must be out and how did like how did those knights fall? Like unless you were to jump diagonally when you step off. Yes. Yeah. Or if you were exactly. to make how do you? But how, like one of the guys is almost all the way to the end, and how do you fall off when you're almost all the way to the end? <laughs> yeah. 
It's kind of I an idiot know. See, proof I'm leap if, of faith. You shouldn't be able to fall. Or maybe what if he was born in the cave and he's lived there for 20 years <laughs> and he's trying to get back? It's like Plato's. <laughs> he's hey, trying to get out. The cave. Actually, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's. You're right. He's at the. He's at the. He, he looks like he's falling off at the from the other side. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Right. Well, you got to imagine some guy in the art department doing that and going, "This looks good." Showing it to the, <laughs> yeah. showing it yeah. to the art director and yeah. saying, "Yeah, that looks good." And Spielberg saying, "Yeah, that looks good." And nobody is thinking about it <laughs> too much. Like that'll work for that moment. Right. <laughs> well, so which you know we see the uh, this replica in a painting in Henry's house, right, over his desk. Mm-hmm. I want to know which came first, the illustration in the book or the painting? I like the painting. I think he copied it from the painting, just like he copied yeah. the other things from the okay. paintings into the diary. Gotcha. But there's some other interesting stuff in here, too. Like, there's some writing above the picture that if you zoom in, it says, the path of God is inextricably bound up with sacrifice. Hmm. Which is a nice tie into the screen, but this seems, I mean, to the scene, but this seems awfully prophetic. Like, that it would know this. Like, wow. no, why, what would the sacrifice be of a normal guy just coming through here? Well, your head. Or I guess your <laughs> sacrifice, if you're coming seeking the grail, you're, you're going to have to sacrifice having the grail or something. You're going to find out. Like yeah. You can't have it. You can't keep it. Just, it. It's just interesting because it's like a little, it, it's like. Indy's thing here is he has to make a sacrifice. And so it's interesting that it's, you know, or that somebody's making a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And then there's also a drawing of the grail that looks exactly like the grail, the real grail we'll see later. And it's surrounded by all of these other little grails in the picture. And it, it says, each of its eight cups contained one of the elements of the divine draft. I don't know what that means. Hmm. Unless, yeah, like, wait. the draft is the wrath of God. I don't know. It's each of the eight, or each of its eight cups. Yeah, is that contained, what it says? Each of its eight cups contained one of the elements of the divine draft. D r a u g h t. And then that drawing of a grail and a kind of lighter pen right there. It looks like it's like a cup inside a cup or something. Yeah, there's a bigger cup below that like doesn't an, look like the grail. Is it nesting cups of like <laughs> of the grail? <laughs> like Russian Russian a, nesting cups. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, so is the, like, the grail, the happy grail, the Bazooka Joe grail, <laughs> with all the stuff coming out of it, and the the knight is reaching out, like, Frankenstein pose, right, with yeah. both hands. <laughs> Does he see that grail? Is that what he's reaching for? And the grail's just sort of that, uh, like, the old Celtic legend grail almost in the sky sort of thing? That's kind yeah. of how it feels just, to me, is yeah. Is that in yeah. his mind's eye? Yeah, is it just like an allegorical thing? Right, exactly. It reminds me of Excalibur, the movie, where like he just sees like this giant grail like over the, or like in the some castle. Or so. Yeah, he's got like a vision of a grail and he's kind of following it. Well, Pete, you bring up a good point though. I don't know what, what Indy's sacrifice here is. He's coerced into all this stuff. Well, I think I think he is making a sacrifice, and I well sort of, but I think, I mean, I keep talking about how I think. This part of the movie mirrors the beginning of Raiders. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of a, you know, these are the two bookends. And in the first two, you know, he doesn't really have to exp- show a lot of faith in order to get the power from these supernatural things. But now he's at a place where he has to exhibit some faith in order to make it through. And it's no longer, you know, he's just out to acquire an artifact for a collection. Now it's he's making a decision based on he loves this guy and this guy's about to die. Well, you know, what, what is this one? The lion, the leap of lion's faith. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> I think oh, it's the leaping Def lions. Leopard album you were yeah. going to get. Yeah. <laughs> a question for you, Jonathan, you know, lions seem to have prominence in this film and this last booby trap or challenge um, is the Def Leppard album <laughs> <laughs> leaping lions uh what wh- why do you think uh why do you think that is what do you think of what, what's all this business with lions we saw lions on the way into the you know the very first challenge i think at some point in the movie doesn't uh 
Doesn't doesn't uh, Henry mention a lion of Judah? Something else about a lion? Well, <laughs> I think that's beyond my kin. I accept <laughs> that you know <laughs> lions represent courage, and it takes courage to take the leap of yeah, faith. That's nice. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. I, I think. It, I mean, I I do think he, in terms of sacrifice. I mean, he's if for some reason somehow he's miscalculated and he takes a step off, he's going to fall a long way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And he's willing you know, to sacrifice his life for his dad. We wondered, where, what do you think that pit goes to? Down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just officially down? <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. I, mean, is, I, I feel like there's something, again, supernatural about all these booby traps. And I, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied with that uh, pit having a bottom. Yeah, I, I think they're not supernatural until this point, but I feel like that pit feels supernatural. Like that pit mm-hmm. feels like there's no bottom. Yeah, or, or it goes like straight to hell. Yeah. Which sucks for those nights. <laughs> <laughs> they tried so hard. That's what's so nice about that film, though, is it manages to put out so many ideas that could have really just seemed ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And it all goes, I mean, he goes across this bridge, and then there's this knight. I mean, how old is the knight? We, well, I don't want you guys to get ahead yourselves. But, <laughs> I mean, you have to accept. The movie works so well that you have suspended your disbelief so securely that it can just do what it wants that's how yeah successful a movie it is uh-huh you know and really there are really very few movies that that do that as well as the indiana jones movies why why is that do you think it's just sort of the power and magnetism of harrison ford and indiana jones or, or is it also the writing well i think harrison ford i mean it a combination of things but it but Harrison Ford definitely has something to do with it I was just talking with uh, uh, Terry Rawlings who was the editor of Alien and Blade Runner hmm. and uh, we were talking about the new Blade Runner and how it got better when Harrison Ford was in it and I said you know why is that and he said working with him on Blade Runner everything that he just because he was because he is the everyman Yes, he's a movie star, but he he approached you know he approached each scene as if he were just a regular guy, and so that I guess that does kind of help you suspend your disbelief because you can believe in him. He believes mm-hmm. it. Harrison Ford as oh, that's a good Jones, point. Yeah. he believes it, and like he said, and when people criticize Star Wars, saying it's two dimensional, he said no. But, he said the character is written as two dimensional, but I bring the third dimension. Mm-hmm. I'm a third. I'm a, as an actor, bringing yeah, the wow. third dimension, and, yeah. and it actually works. And of course, he's right because hundreds of millions of people agree with him. And, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, and love these movies. And so, and then of course, Spielberg is you know, at, at that time he was just such a great director. I mean. Mm-hmm. He just he, there's no hardly any better storyteller in the history of cinema. I mean, there, you know, there's a there's a few up there in the top ten or twenty, but Spielberg is definitely up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you say he's an everyman, but I feel like you know he's an everyman that every man wants to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I, like I like his everyman reaction here when he realizes it's a leap of faith. And he just goes, ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Like he's just right. like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I love that. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah, it's like when, so he, did, when did, he sees the snakes. And why did it have to be snakes? Right, right. Yeah, why did <laughs> right. it have to be a leap of faith? <laughs> but what's yeah. fascinating is, I, does it dawn on him at that moment that he means that, like, okay, I'm, I have to get down to brass tacks here and really believe that if I put my foot forward <laughs> i'm gonna ha- i'm gonna find something or land on something is that why he's so upset or exasperated i guess he just doesn't know if he can do it he's like yeah. wait yeah. i gotta like what does that even mean a leap of faith like what, uh, do, do i believe am i gonna believe you know can i you know what do i yeah he's like this one this really is- freaks me out this one freaks me out the most mm-hmm. yeah 
It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. That this is kind of a, a, a one chancer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Un- unless there's the you know being Indiana Jones, there's probably a vine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Somewhere. Yeah. He does have a whip. Th- this if things went bad. He could maybe catch himself. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Why don't you? I guess if you tied the whip and you held on to it and you tied it to the rope, that's cheating. That's not a leap of faith, is it? <laughs> like I want, maybe that's how those knights fell. Mm-hmm. They were holding on to something, or they had a rope or something, and they're like, nah, nah, nah. Well, the one thing that's interesting about this is that if he had kind of leaned out a little bit and looked at the bridge from a different angle, <laughs> he would have very easily yeah. seen it. And I think that's actually kind of a nice thing to think of for life. Like if you maybe you look at something from a slightly different perspective. You mm-hmm. realize it's not exactly what it cracks up to be. You know, it's like, oh, and that's actually pretty easy. By that, Pete, do you mean a religious perspective? Well, any, I think it could apply to anything. <laughs> oh, that's kind of the leap of faith here that he's yeah. being tested on. Yeah, yeah. Although well, if you did look in the other direction, you'd be like, oh, this isn't a leap of faith. There's a bridge right here. <laughs> <laughs> put my foot down and walk across. No, that, that's yeah. kind of the total irony of all these booby yeah. traps. Yeah. Is we're set up by Donovan to be like, now, Dr. Jones, we'll see what you really believe. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, you kind of fake your way through it a little bit. But it's yeah. interesting because we're, you know, we still haven't gotten anything supernatural in this movie. That's true. I, You know, I still, look, I've been fighting you guys all week on that. And so I'm going to ask uh, Jonathan, <laughs> is there something supernatural about these booby traps? Like, are these just regular, degular, man-made booby traps? Or is there something spiritual or, you know, like the, the breath of God that comes through? Is it, it, you know, that's unaccounted for, you know? There isn't a fan at the end of the hallway. <laughs> is there something supernatural about these? Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, you guys have been thinking about this more deeply than I have recently. Uh, <laughs> well, f- hmm. fighting, really. <laughs> well, isn't there something weird? I, I always thought there was something weird in the in that uh, where he has to spell out the name of God and he almost falls through. He's in a cave. What is he falling through? Where is he going to fall? <laughs> <laughs> it's more cave down here. <laughs> oh, you should have joined us yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I, I remember as an audience just talking as an audience member I thought there had to be something supernatural or weird there because there was some kind of inner bottomless pit in the middle of this cave that you know sucked you down to yeah. hell or mm-hmm. something Yeah. Um, so yeah I'd say there's a supernatural element in there uh, and you know because yes. who is <laughs> Because it almost seems like somebody, some spirit, has to come and reset all the traps and rebuild everything. After <laughs> yeah, each person right. sort of, you know, goes in there and messes everything up. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what the breath of God does. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like come back in, away. like uh, yeah. It's like the the custodian of. Yeah, some angels have one. to come in. Well, I got to remake the J. <laughs> <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or do you think that was what the the Brotherhood of the Cruciform Sword was actually for? Like if they hadn't all died in that (laughs) sort of bad attack that they made on the Nazis, if their job was to come in here and kind of sweep up and vacuum and put everything back. (laughs) Change change the light bulb. Yeah. Yeah, We get another one of these weird moments that I like in some of these movies um, where Indy, it it feels like Indy is totally separate from everybody who he left back in the, you know, the main part of the cave. Uh-huh. But then, you know, like, uh, Henry has this kind of, like, spasm this, of pain, and, and, and Marcus is yelling for him, like, come, come quick, and Indy can hear him totally fine. He can probably hear Henry, too. And it reminds me of, like, when uh, Willie is in her, you know, beautiful, comfortable, opulent uh, palace bedroom, and she's just calling down the thing to Indy and Shorty, who are in this totally different setting. Like, they're in this, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. they're, yeah, they're true. getting crushed by you know spikes and stuff <laughs> and it's just like it's weird these two places are connected but then you're like oh yeah they are like he's probably like 20 feet from everybody right now yeah but it feels yeah. like he's you know miles away yeah well, it's also that now, weird cinema dream logic yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah i have a, a question here so 
Marcus stands up and says, Indy, you must hurry. Come quickly. And it's not Sala who says that. Why is Marcus all of a sudden the dude? Well, Sala's sitting with Henry, and he, like Henry's head is in his lap, isn't it? So Marcus is the one who can yeah. get up and. But if and you but if you were to write this scene, you know, and and what? I don't want to take anything Marcus? useful away from Marcus. I don't <laughs> no, want to take any no, I, I agree. Good, solid I agree. Marcus dialogue from Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. Please Marcus let him do something sober. Back up. And, yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course, he's doing. It is a great line. This is our good old. Marcus, our buddy Marcus that we love. <laughs> but it is fascinating that, like, you know, it, Henry's not in Marcus's uh, lap there. Mm-hmm. Because they're, they're the ones who are, are really close and know each other. And the way this entire film is set up with the characters, y- you would expect Sala would be the one who would, who would take the action here. I think it's Marcus because... Marcus is more of a link between father and son. Mm. That's mm. a good point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a great point. he has more of a history with both of them. Yeah. Whereas Sala is more Indy's pal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, that's good. right. Yeah, because he's kind of the link between them at, at the beginning too. When you know when Marcus drives him over to Indy's dad's house. Oh, absolutely. You know, why is it? Do you think Marcus? came on this journey Jonathan they make a big deal of that at the beginning like you know tell tell Donovan I'll take a ticket he goes I'll tell him we'll take two mm-hmm. what do you think's going on here is 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 Marcus just truly just worried about his great friend was he worried about Indy well I'm trying I think he's worried I think in the beginning he's worried about Henry yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, I think so yeah and then also yeah, I get it. It's, taking the more cynical view, it's, it's nice to bring him along as a foil for Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Right. Until they get... Well, yeah, they got... Yeah, until they get the Sala. Right. Yeah, and I'm curious if, if part of Marcus just wants to see the Grail, too. Like, part of him wanted to come along just because he's mm-hmm. like, hey, this, I, I want to be part of... You know, I want to see this. I don't want to just hear about it after it's put into a government warehouse somewhere. Yeah. Right. I wonder if that's like what happened at the end of Raiders uh, sort of influenced his decision to go. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sort of felt that. I remember watching it. It's like, yeah, he gets, he gets to go on this adventure. Yeah. 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 And he's such a Dan Elm Elliott, right? He's such a great yeah. actor. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We love oh yeah, he's great. Yeah. And, and, and we've mentioned before, but I think he was really, at this point, he was pretty sick and he was suffering a lot through this. And I think it, yeah. it, uh, it's amazing that he, he made it through this. Yeah, because that was a pretty physical shoot. Oh, yeah. We went to several yeah. locations. Yeah. And going yeah. really fast. Well, uh, yeah, any other thoughts yeah. on Minute one? Uh, I just wanted to say... When you were talking about him coming out of the cave, uh-huh. if you want to be Freudian about it, it's like a rebirth. <laughs> we do. Oh, very nice. Oh, I wow. like that. Yeah, that's really nice. He's reconnected with his dad, so now he can be reborn as a... Yeah, it's like he's going to be reborn as a more spiritual and somebody who has more of a relationship with their father. <laughs> that's wow. Good. I'm excited nice. to see this, uh, this reborn guy in the next movie. <laughs> you know what I wrote? I, I'm sure you guys have all read the Indiana Jones novel I wrote. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Have any of you read it? I didn't even know that I wrote one. No, it has a great <laughs> cover. Oh, yeah. I really like the cover. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Greg Knight did that. I worked on worked on it with Greg. He's he's a fantastic artist. Um, but it was so much fun. Because uh, I'm trying that book. Oh God, I can't remember where it comes in the continuity, but I got to write a scene with with uh, Indiana Jones and his father, and it was so much fun to write that scene. Awesome, uh, just because the char- just because the characters were so well written in that movie, it was so easy to imagine uh-huh. them talking. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you just <laughs> that's amazing. You just sort of put yourself into the zone, so to speak, and 
they just talk. So that you know how they they know you know whatever the topic was that they had to talk about what each one, each one of them would say, and it's because the the one movie was so well done and the actors and you know Sean Connery of course so great uh, and they thought he would get a at least a nomination for supporting actor academy award but it was not to be I guess I don't remember what the competition was but he was robbed yeah <laughs> <laughs> well just, just so everybody knows that was, it was Indiana Jones and the mystery of Mount Sinai is that right yes, yes. yeah right Okay. And it's yeah. got the great uh the guy with the mechanical arm on the Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I resurrected that guy from Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, uh I think you you were asking before uh if we're going to be doing the the next uh installment and that's a resounding yes. Well, oh, count sure. me in for at least a minute. I I can <laughs> I that was I was around for the I wasn't on set or anything. I went only went on set for a day, but um, I do have lots of stories because I was, you know, you even working in the office, there were things that trickled down to us, and there was a, a lot of good stories attached to it. Oh, it's awesome! Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, well, wait a minute. Speaking of something getting excited. Machines coming alive. That is always fun. <laughs> uh, this just in from Professor Christy Porter. Why did they make this so easy for the professor of medieval literature? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Kind of I, I, I kind of don't get it, actually. <laughs> You don't get it. The, the professor of medieval literature is like the only guy in the world who gets through these booby traps. But he's not. He's like, he's dying on the floor. No, but he's the only guy who can get through them. Like, I mean, he's the guy who did all the research <laughs> with all the answers. I know he physically didn't get through them, but, you know. Um, <laughs> great. We thank uh, Professor Porter. Yeah. That's <laughs> great. We enjoyed that. Thank you. That was really good. It gave us something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> what was actually really good, uh, Jonathan? This was a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And I, I oh yeah, and I, I highly recommend. Uh, I mean, I haven't read uh, Indiana Jones and the Mystery of Mount Sinai, which is on my list, and I will do that. But uh, you, you reference uh, the mechanical arm in your complete making of Indiana Jones, and that is. Uh, by far and away has been indispensable for the making of this podcast and I know oh, yeah. several of our listeners read that regularly too and I just I can't recommend highly enough if you don't have it get a copy yes get five copies yeah <laughs> <laughs> give them to your friends <laughs> I get a royalty on this book I, I, I would actually I never have but if everybody bought five to twenty copies I might get it might see ten cents one day Come on, gang. We can do it. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for that. And if you uh, if you want to share your 10 cents with us tomorrow, come back here and join us for Minute 109 of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade here on the Indiana Jones Minute.